Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Dr. Jazz Sarah. I'm a fellow in general cardiology at Mayo Clinic. We're at ACC 2022 in Washington, D.C. And on behalf of Fits on the Go, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. William Fearon, Professor of Medicine and Director of Interventional Cardiology at Stanford University. Dr. Fearon, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we're talking about FAME3, the FAME3 trial, and the quality of life outcomes that were presented by Dr. Zimmerman yesterday afternoon. And so, uh, Dr. Fearon, do you mind just giving us a bit of background about the FAME3 trial and uh, some of the, the results that were presented last year in the New England Journal of Medicine article? Sure. Uh, so FAME3 was a multi-center international trial comparing uh, coronary artery bypass graft surgery to percutaneous coronary intervention in patients with multivessel disease. And the big difference of FAME3 compared to prior studies was that uh, it utilized current generation drug eluting stents and used fractional flow reserve to guide the PCI, neither of which had been uh, included in, in major uh, previous studies. Um, and uh, last fall, we presented the primary outcome. Uh, the study was a non-inferiority trial, and the primary outcome was one-year major adverse cardiac and cerebrovascular events. Um, and the study did not, or FFR-guided PCI, did not meet the preset criterion for non-inferiority. The event rate at one year was about 10.6% in the FFR-guided arm, uh, PCI arm, and in the cabbage arm, 6.9%. Um, and most of the difference was due to repeat revascularization with some difference uh, in MI, but no real difference in death or stroke. Um, the take-home message is, although we didn't meet the primary endpoint, we did notice that the difference uh, in event rates uh, was much less than what had been in previous studies. For example, in the syntax trial, the uh, PCI arm had a 17% event rate compared to the 10% in FAME3. Um, and the cabbage arm in syntax was around 12%. So both groups did better, and the difference between the two narrowed as well. And so that's what kind of set the stage for the study that we presented um, yesterday, or that Dr. Zimmerman presented yesterday. Uh, and that was to look at quality of life. Um, because uh, the differences are narrowed, uh, other factors like quality of life, angina, working status play a greater role, uh, perhaps, in decision making. And previous studies had shown that at one year, cabbage had better quality of life and less angina associated with it. And so that's what we looked at in this study. Yeah, so you raise a good point that um, accounting for things like quality of life, angina, work status is important to consider when we do shared decision making and have those discussions with our patients. So do you mind briefly outlining the results of the study that were presented yesterday? Sure. So uh, basically... Uh, during the course of the first year after revascularization, every patient, they did a baseline uh, EQ5D questionnaire. Um, they also had baseline angina status and working status assessed. And then they had that repeated at one month and at 12 months. And they also had angina status and working status at six months. And the primary endpoint was the difference in the EQ5D summary score at one year between the two groups. And we saw no significant difference. They were basically identical, meaning that the PCI arm had similar quality of life uh, compared to cabbage arm. Uh, we also looked at other metrics that were part of the EQ5D, like the visual analog scale. That would, followed the same uh, uh, findings. They had similar uh, one-year uh, rates. And angina was also, uh, although numerically a bit higher, it was 6% uh, uh, CCS class 2 or greater angina in the PCI arm and a little bit over 3% in the cabbage arm, but not significantly different and much better than um, the you know baseline in both groups. The other interesting thing was the working status. In people who were less than 65 years old, they had significantly better or significantly more patients had returned to work in the PCI arm compared to the cabbage arm. And so those, I, those were all very interesting findings. The other important thing, which we had known from other studies and is intuitive, is that the recovery is much quicker with PCI. So at one month, um, 
the EQ5D and the visual analog scale and work status were all uh, significantly better with PCI. So when you look at the tra trajectory or the area under the curve during that first year, quality of life was significantly improved with PCI compared to cabbage. Excellent. Really interesting findings. And uh, as you mentioned, these are intuitive, but it's always good to have randomized clinical trials that prove and demonstrate these findings that we otherwise intuitively think are correct. So in light of these findings, how would this sort of modify or play into your discussions with your patients going forward? I know that we're still awaiting findings from three years and five years, and we'll see what they show when the time come. But at this point, how does it change your discussion with your patients? Yeah, so you raise a good point. Certainly, longer term follow up is going to be critical. But um, I would say that the, the key difference in FAME 3 is that we found similar quality of life and similar degrees of angina where prior studies had shown better outcomes in that respect with cabbage. So not only did they show better outcomes with hard endpoints, but they also showed better quality of life. Um, and so I think the reason why we may have had that I ha has to do, I think, with better stents, the current generation stents, uh, leading to less repeat revascularization. You know, repeat revascularization was only about, you know, five or six percent in the PCI arm compared to, you know, I can't even remember, but something like 12 or 15 percent in syntax. Um, so that was a lot better. And I think also the FFR guidance, uh, identifying those lesions that were really causing ischemia and causing angina, and by treating those, um, optimized the benefit of stenting and avoiding unnecessary stents, limited the downside of stenting. So um, it, how do we apply this practically? Well, I think, you know, we can now give patients updated data about the risk of hard endpoints after either approach. And we can now provide them with quality of life data, which is also very relevant to the patient, uh, and then make a shared decision. And there certainly are some patients who would sacrifice, you know, maybe a higher rate of repeat revask in order to be back at work or be able to attend their grandkids, you know, graduation or marriage, wedding or something like that. Um, and uh, so I think this, this allows us to make those informed decisions, whereas prior to FAME 3, we were going on outdated data. Well, just one last comment here. I did notice that uh, Dr. Zimmerman's presentation yesterday uh, in his limitation slide, he did mention that uh, this study didn't uh, include measures of sort of cognitive impairment or cognitive performance. How might you do that going forward if you were to add to a study like this in the future? Well, I think the uh, I think it's probably too late for this study just because the main differences that we would see would have been around the, the procedural, uh, you know, effects of, of bypass surgery. Um, and, you know, it, it gets to clinical trial design and, and, you know, you have to make some sacrifices. Uh, we were, uh, this was an investigator initiated study uh, based on research grants from Medtronic and Abbott. And, uh, you know, we had to choose exactly what was the most important information and doing, you know, uh, detailed cognitive surveys, uh, unfortunately fell off <laughs> the list of things we would have loved to have those data. Um, so I don't know that we'll be able to really recapture that, but in future studies, I think that would be good to look at for sure. Well, thanks very much for your time this afternoon, Dr. Um, Piron. That was excellent. I think we all learned a lot uh, today. And so if, uh, if you want to learn about future studies and other work that we've done on Fits on the Go, then please see our YouTube channel uh, and our Twitter page as well. Thanks for your time this afternoon.